Hello everyone, and welcome to my second video for The Legend of Zelda on the NES. Last time we left off, we talked about codes that affect Link, the old man, other things here and there, and even a code that completely erased my save file. Well, thankfully, that didn't happen this time around, but for this week's codes, they're still helpful, hurtful, and downright funny. So, I hope you enjoy the second episode of Game Genie Codes for The Legend of Zelda. Okay, this first code is mainly enemy specific. NGA, UGA. Some of the sprites have slightly different colors, but the main focus of this code is that some enemies have extremely high HP. Oddly enough, this only affects some of the weakest enemies in the game, but it seems to have no effect whatsoever on the stronger enemies. Come on, die already. As you can see, it clearly affects the Octoroks. It doesn't affect some other enemies in the game, but it also affects the keys, or bats, whatever you want to call them. This is a lot of work just to get one key out of these, well, bats. The naming convention in Zelda is kind of confusing. Finally, that's over with. Anyway, next code. Here's another enemy specific code Ike AOO. This code only seems to affect the tech tykes. I think that's how you pronounce it. But basically when they jump, sometimes they will jump all over the screen and sometimes just hit you even though they don't appear to be hitting you. As far as I know, this doesn't affect any other enemy in the game. I've gone through most of the game with this code on and it doesn't seem to have any other alterations. So the use on this code is limited, but it's just kind of funny to watch them freak out. The third code I have has way more effect on the game than the previous two. P-O-V-U-P-E affects the items that the enemies drop. Typically when you kill enemies, they drop hearts, sometimes rupees or other things, but most of the enemies drop bombs instead, which is kind of cool, but at the same time, you won't be able to heal ever. Another perk to this is just two boards to the left. Those enemies over there will occasionally drop the highest grade sword in the game. So you can start with the best sword, and take this code off if you wanted to. I find myself dying a lot, though, with this code, just because you won't ever get health. So you might want to stock up on potions, or anything else to aid you in your quest, before turning this code on. Another important thing to note is that if you did want to play the game with this code on, is that all the mandatory items in the game, in order to progress, do spawn normally. So you shouldn't be hindered by anything except not being able to heal. This code's kind of like a double-edged sword, because you get power-ups, but at the same time, it's a challenge, because you'll really need to be on your toes as to not lose too much health per board. The fourth code is IKAAEE, -E, not to be confused with the IKAAAE code. Now this code also has a dramatic effect on the game. All boards are completely vacant of enemies, which is kind of awesome. Occasionally a rock will spawn that can hit you, or sometimes even a bomb that you can pick up, but the strangest thing happens when you enter a dungeon with this code on. These three weird things will spawn in every section of the dungeon and fly right. If you touch one, you'll get carried to another board. Now, I don't know if it's just my luck, but whenever I seem to get picked up, I get sent to another room and I'm unable to do anything every time. As you can see in this situation, I'm pretty much button mashing trying to get my character to do something, but to no avail. So let's retry and beat this dungeon without hitting those. As you can see, all the items once again will spawn normally. Basically, once whatever those things are leave, the game treats the room as being beaten, so the items you'll need to progress will still spawn normally in their appropriate places on the map. 
A good use for this code, I guess, would be if you wanted to go through the game really, really quickly, and as long as you don't run into any of those things in the dungeons, you should be able to do so. And there's probably a better code to get through the game quicker, but I, that's the only thing I can really come up with for this one. As always, I try to leave the last code for something really strange, weird, or just unexplainable. So, here you go. EPZ EKG affects the Octoroks in a way I cannot possibly explain. Basically, the red ones turn into their stronger blue forms, and the blue ones turn into those blue tech tykes really rapidly. And it just... There are no words for <laughs> how weird this looks. If these things were real, and this actually happened to them, I'd actually feel pretty bad. They don't really attack, I mean, sometimes they do, but this affects their movement, they're attacking, this pretty much completely cripples this already weak enemy. Don't worry, my friend. You won't have to suffer anymore. Thanks again for watching my whole video. It's been a while since I've revisited Balloon Fight, and just like this week's video, I still have quite a few codes for the game. The following week, I'll be creating another video for a completely new game. I just wanted to touch on some of my old favorites, and hope you'll enjoy them as much as I did. So as always, please comment and rate my video, and if you want more crazy Game Genie codes in the future, then be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching.